Welcome back. My next guest needs no introduction, though I am going to introduce him. Cam Batley is the Chief Corporate Officer of Aurora Cannabis Inc. trading on the TSX under the symbol ACB and Cam. Welcome to the show. How are you this fine day? I'm extraordinary, thank you. Um, I want to open that, that shirt is definitely extraordinary. Well, you know, it's uh, it's a shout it from the rooftops kind of shirt, and there's <laughs> a really good is. reason to be shouting from the rooftops today, blood in the streets notwithstanding. Yes. And uh, I'm ex exceptionally excited about the idea that you might actually be a U.S. listed company very soon, and I'm not yes. talking OTC. Not talking OTC. Huh. Can um, you give us any kind of hint at all whatsoever? Uh, we, can, we can talk a little bit about it. We've previously okay. indicated very clearly that we plan to have a U.S. listing, and mm -hmm. uh, now I can say that we're targeting next month. It'll be October. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll add another piece of the puzzle, and we've been very, very busy adding pieces to the puzzle. It's been business development, and it's been uh, you know, rising production, and it's been uh, adding science. Uh, and um, we've been incredibly busy, and it's all, it's all coming together. If you take a look, for example, uh, we've uh, announced a couple of acquisitions this week. Uh, ICC Labs in right. South America, and AgriPro in, uh, in Lithuania, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, both of those are uh, exceedingly important to our future plans, and it's an indication of just how big uh, we're going to be on a global basis. So our uh, head of global business development, uh, Neil Balot, he and his team have really, really been killing it. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to how, how do you guys keep, like, is there anybody who sits <laughs> at a central control <laughs> station and is watching everything that's going on and actually coordinating all this, or is it more of a siloed uh, approach? So there is uh, an overall plan, and um, you can probably imagine that what we want to do is add um, all of the pieces required to be a fully integrated uh, global cannabis company. And, and that means looking after our capabilities across the board. So our science capabilities, our, um, uh, our ability to extract and create derivative products, um, our planning for all of the segments of the market that we're not allowed to be in uh, yet mm -hmm. or immediately after consumer legalization on October 17th, um, but will be one year after that. Um, and, and also the regional plan. So we want to make sure that we have uh, market leadership everywhere we operate. That is the plan. Wherever cannabis is legal on any level, whether it be CBD only, uh, whether it be medical cannabis and in the future uh, additional consumer markets, uh, we are going to be there. And where we operate, we want to be the market leader. That's the plan. Hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's an ambitious plan. And it is. It's, uh, and it's not something that's achieved overnight. Well, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you, but you're making, you're making all these incredible moves. Um, you know, the Australis transaction is yeah. something that really kind of excites that. me as well. So what's, what's exactly the plan with Australis now again? So uh, Australis, we made an uh, announcement today that we're uh, going to be listing on the CSE on the 19th of September. So we just have to complete the distribution of shares and warrants. Uh, we did an initial uh, oversubscribed private placement for uh, total receipts of uh, $17 million. That's the first step. And then, of course, uh, we list on the CSE and begin trading uh, under the symbol AUSA. AUSA. Mm -hmm. oh, very, very clever. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk a bit about this Lithuanian organic hemp company because yes. that seems like quite a big deal, even though people think Lithuania and they think, where is that exactly? Is that part of Russia? <laughs> you know. Well, of course it is. It's one of the, the former Soviet republics, um, but of course now it's part of the European Union. Hmm. Uh, and it's a lovely market, very well managed, very stable. Uh, and um, uh, AgriPro is the largest organic hemp company in Europe. And as you know, hemp is a huge part of our story. So we're called Aurora Cannabis, but we're involved in every aspect of this plant and a major commitment to hemp via our majority ownership of Hempco in Canada. Uh, there's a hemp element to our ICC acquisition as well. And we're interested in hemp for all of uh, the, the reasons you might imagine. It's not just as a low cost source of organic CBD. That's one of the pieces. Um, there is also a lot more that you can do with that plant, including um, making building materials out of it. You can actually build homes out of hemp. Uh, and, and perhaps the largest opportunity of all is uh, hemp as a source of non-animal protein. And the, the demand for protein from non-animal sources is exploding around the world, particularly in Asia. So we like the hemp business on its own, separate, completely separate from cannabis, but it's part of our overall integrated business strategy. Right. So uh, 4,000 acres under contract 
That strikes me as a tremendous footprint. It's, it's a huge footprint, and it furthers our leadership in Europe. Remember, uh, through uh, our acquisition of uh, Padanios, now uh, Aurora Deutschland, uh, we've, we have the, the largest by volume um, distributor of medical cannabis in, in Europe, and we're also participating in additional markets like Italy and Malta and all of the other European markets that are opening up now. And of course, we're building Aurora Nordic, this uh, massive sky class facility, a million square foot sky class facility in Odense, Denmark. Uh, so, Europe, we're exceedingly bullish on. That will be an outstanding market for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, uh, the facility you're building there then is, is obviously directed towards premium dried flour. Um, yes, so there's two facilities, as, as a matter of fact, in uh, Denmark. We're hitting the ground running with a 100,000 square foot retrofitted greenhouse, and mm -hmm. that'll be in operation first. Uh, and then uh, I believe it's next month we begin construction on Aurora Nordic itself, the million square foot sky class facility. And like the other sky class facilities, uh, Aurora Sun uh, in Madison Hat and Aurora Sky at Edmonton International Airport. Uh, this is a concept that's unique in the world. Nobody else is building such massive scale indoor facilities, happen to have a glass roof so we can make use of the sun, but still have that precision uh, control over all the environmental variables. And what that means is uh, what we think uh, will be absolutely the highest production efficiency per square foot in the world, um, plus uh, that precision control over the environmental variables means that we mitigate risk uh, mm -hmm. because we will not have crop failures, we won't be open to the air. Uh, and then at the same time, we're building exceedingly high quality cannabis and we're doing it at less than uh, a buck per gram. Uh, so ultra low cost of production. And um, so we're checking off all the boxes, massive scale, high quality and low cost. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the volume of uh, trading in the stock is <laughs> yeah. like, it's just overwhelming to Isn't watch. It? I was just walking by uh, the, uh, the TSX with my little girl. Uh, today uh, on the way in and uh, we were the volume leader again and and that seems to be the case but it's not just Aurora we're seeing you know the the other leading cannabis stocks are driving volume on the TSX virtually every day it's mm -hmm. an exciting time for Canada well it's incredibly exciting time because the market is so robust yeah. people are making money there I mean I don't know how many new millionaires every month are probably minted as a result of cannabis yeah. but it's got to be in the hundreds um, what what is what do you make of the the rumor mill, and uh, you know, there's this. Well, there's this continuous conjecture and speculation yeah. on who's going to buy whom next. Well, you can understand where it comes from, right? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, Con Constellation uh, has been pulling uh, this sector along with their major move in with uh, Canopy, um, and and it's it's logical that mm -hmm. the next largest uh, players would be um, considered likely partners for major uh, outside companies. But the the big story here is that um, you know this is. This is exactly what we said would happen. We've been saying for a long time that Canada is the leader in cannabis. First medical, now consumer, and now global. Uh, and um, and that's, that's proof right there. The, the, the big companies in the mature industries, all the usual suspects, um, are, are coming and talking to the market leaders in the Canadian cannabis sector in order to create the global cannabis sector. That's a very, very exciting development. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Canada's role as the global leader is cemented in perpetuity, or do you think that there will continuously be threats from emerging economies that incrementally adopt deprohibition as the default set for cannabis? So let's be precise. We can't be complacent here. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why Aurora has been on such a tear, uh, both with our, our organic growth and creating this new cultivation concept, our sky class facilities, but also with our M&A. And so now, uh, uh, if you take into account all of the companies that we acquired, I think it's something like 15 once mm -hmm. we close uh, ICC. Uh, and that's in about two years. And there's a reason for that. The logic behind it is we've got to move quickly. We can't take for granted that we will be in this leadership position as a country and as individual companies forever. We've got to establish that global footprint and really cement that leadership and do it before any other countries are able to threaten that leadership position. So that's part of the re reason why we feel such a sense of urgency. That's why we're moving so fast. That's why we're all working seven days a week. Sure. One of the most common questions that we get in our chat form as we broadcast when we talk about Aurora is uh, people who are earlier investors in Aurora are mm -hmm. never happy about the, the continuous dilution implied by the acquisition strategy. So I'm just going to put you on the spot for a second and say, what would you Good. say to an investor who, you know, who, who bought in at 
you know, six or seven dollars and sees that value continuously being distributed among a greater number of shareholders over time. So we are not uh, diluting in the classical sense in that we're not issuing shares uh, for working capital. What we are doing very specifically is we are issuing shares in order to acquire assets that are less valuable today than they will be, more, than they will be next year and the year after that. So we're acqui acquiring assets at very attractive prices. Uh, which, by the way, is the same strategy that Australis will be pursuing in the United States, hmm. um, uh, uh, seeking uh, assets that, uh, that will uh, increase in value over time, and that's exactly what we've been doing. But more than that, we've been creating this integrated uh, concept uh, of a cannabis company that, that does everything from facility design and engineering through production of cannabis and hemp, uh, through uh, the creation of derivative products, uh, through uh, the, the, the science, the, the genetics, the selective breeding and so on through Anandia Labs, uh, whom we acquired uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, and then uh, with our distribution in Europe, in, uh, in North America, or in, in Canada for now, um, in the retail side, uh, on the medical side. It's an amazing concept, and I don't think any other, any other cannabis company can touch the level of integration and the comprehensive nature of our business strategy. And what we're going to see is uh, other companies have had their innings uh, in recent weeks. You will see us have our innings as well because we're at uh, a very, very exciting point where our production is starting to ramp up very, very rapidly. Uh, we're going to be at full capacity at Aurora Sky in January. Um, by the beginning of next year, uh, we're going to be producing on the order of 160,000 uh, kilograms a year on an annual run rate. And then adding to that once Aurora Sun comes online in Medicine Hat, and then adding to that when Aurora Nordic comes online. Uh, so uh, we're headed by the beginning of 2020 f towards about 500,000 kilograms or 500 million grams of, uh, of production. At the same time, uh, we're going to have our U.S. listing. At the same time, we're advancing the science uh, of cannabis in ways that I don't think anybody else is doing. So um, this is going to be a very, very exciting fall for Aurora. Right. So just to put a wrapper on that question, um, so you would say to the, the shareholder who's seeing dilution that just be patient because the, the value will ultimately be reflected in the price of those shares. Well, and we're already seeing it. Remember, when we talk about organic growth, it's about building that capacity. And uh, the last quarter that we reported, uh, our Q3 uh, 2018, uh, those results were essentially all based on one facility, our first facility, Aurora Mountain. We now have seven facilities in production uh, across Canada. Uh, and so our, our uh, capacity is increasing very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we have planned for. So you keep adding capacity, you keep adding the science, uh, and some of that science is designed very specifically to lead us even beyond um, what, what we've anticipated thus far into the realm of intellectual property. That is going to be the next layer of value that we add at Aurora. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as an investor in Aurora, mm -hmm. my biggest focus is when, what quarter is it that I can expect to see this, this revenue <laughs> and margin start to ramp to a bottom line on the balance sheet? Well, you're going to see something interesting on the 25th of September, which is when we're reporting our year end. It's my mother's birthday. Oh. A well, gift for I'll, mama. I'll, it'll be a busy day, but I'll, I'll have to call and <laughs> say happy birthday to your mom. If you she'll give her she'll be floored. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to, on a pro forma basis, we're going to report uh, the totality of revenues for Aurora Plus, Canamed Plus, MedRelief, even though we haven't fully consolidated MedRelief. Uh, and um, uh, that's, that's going to be a, a, an initial indication of just how significant our, our revenues are and how quickly they're growing. Remember that we only started to sell uh, cannabis uh, in January of 2016, we were 18 months behind the, the, the first 13 companies to get licensed, the blessed 13, so uh, all of the other um, peer companies in the sector. Um, actually two of which we've acquired. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so we've played catch up, I think, exceedingly well. And we've also done it with a very, very different concept. We haven't retrofitted uh, old greenhouses or warehouses. Uh, we've created a purpose-built concept. So a little bit of a delay, but now it's coming online. Now is the time for Aurora to shine. Okay, so the, this, this quarter is when we're going to see uh, the, a big balance sheet? You, you're going to see uh, Aurora's uh, revenues uh, changing significantly. Okay. Um, uh, this quarter? Uh, well, this reported quarter takes us to, uh, takes us to June 30th, right? right. That's, th that's our year end. Okay. Um, the September quarter will be reporting in uh, November, and, uh, huh. and that will show, I, I think, uh, huh. some 
pretty surprising and, and favorable results, including uh, increasing sales in Europe, which is such a great market for us because the, the margins are even higher in Europe than they are in Canada. Sure. How fast will Latin America come on stream? Uh, we think fast. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's becoming almost a, an issue of fear of missing out, FOMO, um, by countries now, not just investors, but countries. And, and so we're seeing an increased momentum in Europe, in South America, uh, towards uh, bringing in this new industry. And there are very good reasons for it. Um, the same logic that applied in Canada, which is, it, you know, let's take, let's take something that people use widely illegally, illegally, let's put that almost in quotes, mm. um, and have for decades. Let's take that and make it legitimate. Let's make it safer. Let's make sure that there's some regulation on it. And at the same time, let's open up a whole new opportunity uh, economically. So the opportunity for significant investment and economic, uh, economic development spin-offs and new employment and innovation. Who wants to miss out on that? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing uh, countries across Latin America um, take that approach. They, they are looking for companies like Aurora to come in. And one of the nice things about ICC, for example, is that our management team there at ICC is, is so well connected across Latin America and respected. Uh, and so we think that that's going to be one of the significant assets that go along with that acquisition and it will allow us to build uh, our presence in Latin America very, very rapidly. You bet. Cam, as usual, it's a real pleasure talking to you. Thanks for joining me today. Always a pleasure, James. <laughs>